salsa. We're dealing here with an instrument in the same way that there's a correct way to play the piano, a correct way to play the violin. I would say that there's an optimal way to handle turntables and to handle a crossfader. So here's the salsa approved method of handling the crossfader. Is you take the thumb and you rest it gently on the backside of the crossfader, you sick perverted people. Lawsuits. It's terrible. So thumb on the backside of the crossfader, then we want to hit the crossfader and access it through the tips of our fingers. I recommend using your pointer or your middle finger or the two together. Some DJs will maybe bring in this finger over here, but I like to use either the middle finger alone or the middle finger and the pointer together. So we're resting and then we're getting our hits are turning on of the fader through the tips of our fingers. Some things that you want to avoid. I would avoid this, I would avoid this, I would avoid this, and I would avoid this unless you're doing something insane. So when you hit the crossfader, you want to minimize the distance that it moves. So if you have to go all the way over here every time you want to repeat a sound, it's going to be harder to make that sound, that scratch, fast because you have to travel such a long distance backwards. So all you really need to do when you hit the fader is move it a little, little bit. And then you get full sound, and then you're immediately ready to go back and repeat the scratch. So let's look at the forward scratch. Focus in on how the crossfader is being handled. Funky! 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 Funk! Funk! Funky. Funky. Salsa. Now let's take a look at how to handle the record. How to hand all the record. <laughs> okay, back in. So if we were to think about the record like a clock, where we want to position our hand is at nine o'clock, where, you know, up here is 12. Over here is three, six, nine. So we want our point of contact to be at nine o'clock. The part of our hand that we want actually touching the record is this section right here. The salsa recommended method is to start with these two fingers on the record and then see what feels comfortable. I personally like to have this pointer finger on too for extra control but it's really this whole part of the finger that you want on there moving the record back and forth. Then when you're moving the record back and forth, one, you want to be gentle. You'll know you're placing too much force on the record if you're holding it and the platter has stopped. So it, when you're in your resting position, the platter should be moving every time that you're doing your scratches. When you actually move the sound back and forth, the motion is in the wrist, a little bit in the forearm, and I would say I recommend also in this part of the hand. You don't want to get your shoulder in there, and I would also stay away from this part of your finger because you don't really have a lot of muscles in there. So when we're moving the record back and forth, we want a nice, easy, loose touch with our motion. And see how I'm sort of coming forward, flat, and then coming back with a bend. And that the motion is all really in here. So when we're doing our forward scratch and we actually release the record, we want to have the same light touch that we would if we were just moving the record back and forth. So without the crossfader, the way you want to handle the record on the forward scratch is My touch is very light on this, on this hand. Um, even every time I stop it, the platter is still moving. So we'll do the scratch again, and this time we'll focus in on the record hand. Funky, funky, funk, funk, salsa. We accept only the finest here at the Shifty Salsa School of Scratch. Salsa. 